Hello, welcome to Fiber Town. This is episode 154. It's May 18th, 2016. My name is Emily, Chain of Fools on Ravelry and Fiber Town with an RE on Instagram. This is now the third time I attempted to record an introduction to this podcast. And suffice it to say that I'm a whiny, complainy, uh, jerk today. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm complaining about the weather. I was complaining about this and that. I'm glad you all are here and we're going to talk about crafting. I was just complaining about my video quality too. More coffee would be good. Um, last April we had a knit along and it was the nature along the year of the month. The, the word of the month was nature. Mrs. Frozzy was the winner. So Mrs. Frozzy contact me. Don't call me, message me on Ravelry or Instagram. I'm Fibertown on Instagram. Did I say that? Probably. I probably said a million things, and who knows which recording they're in at this point. Anyway, I haven't heard from you, and you won an ebook from CC Allman, the Java Knitting with CC. It's a beautiful ebook, so message me and I will have her get that to you. The knit along this month is the friend along, and thank you to Packy Knits for the shout out. She gave me a shout out on her very cool podcast. You all should go check it out. I think it's called Packing Knits. Is that right? I think so. Um, yeah, so people are doing amazing things, as always, in that thread. And I have picked the prize for this month out of my stash. And since it is the friend along, um, I went to my stash and I looked at things that friends have given me that for whatever reason I haven't used yet. And um, that those for actually these two friends have given me a lot of stuff, so I'm not going to be heartbroken if these leave my stash and go to a good home. So the winner this month, May, will have the choice of a skein of hazelnuts, and this is in the coveralls colorway. I actually had a skein of this and knit it into baby things, and then my friend Kimberly, who has shop teasel. She shopped Teasel on Instagram. She gave me, when we first met, she gave me the same colorway. And I love the colorway. I used it already. So I feel like, even though this is my beloved hazelnuts, which I do adore, this is the Artisan Sock. It's great stuff. It's um, 400 yards. Yeah, it's 90 Superwash, 10 Nylon. I know. So you can choose either that one or this one, who came from a Fiber Fairy Godmother who wants to remain anonymous. She gave me so much stuff. And Kimberly has given me so much stuff from her shop as well. Um, that yeah, I thought I would offer this as a second choice. So you can choose. If you are the winner, you can choose between them. This is Vesper Sock. This was um, a signature stripe plus one exclusive colorway from April 2011. Uh, let's see, it's called Gemstone. 428 yards of self-striping goodness. So, this is a rare thing. Mm -hmm. um, I always kind of refer to this in my head as poodle skirt. I don't really know why. It's called gemstone. Hazelnuts or Vesper? It's your choice for this month if you're the winner. Congratulations in advance. <laughs> okay. This The other knit along is really a take a picture along. It really doesn't require you to do anything new. It's the hashtag hand spun shelf. This is an Instagram only contest. The other contest is on the Ravelry group. And the winner of that contest is going to win a turtle made supported spindle, beautiful Celtic motif, and three of these gorgeous bats from Fiber Monster. So, on, ra on Instagram, rather, take a picture of your hand spun stash and post it with the hashtag handspunshelf. And I think at the, sometime in early June, I am going to um, draw that prize and close that out as it were, and then I will announce on the podcast. Um, what did I wanna say? I will I'll post a reminder on Instagram to get your pictures up if you haven't already such an inspiring hashtag to look at. I, for some reason, adore looking at people's hand spun stashes. Is that strange? I don't think so. All right. I think I've covered everything that's administrative. So let me show you my whips. I have no FOs. 
I have a lot of whips, and that's the reason I have no FOs. Um, I'm wearing an old FO. This is the this is my first schoolhouse tunic from So Liberated. I love this pattern, and it's out of some poplin that I bought in Spain. And this is some plum colored linen that lines the lapels. That sometimes do you want to flop open? This one especially. Um, and I always wear it with a tank top underneath. I love this thing. It's got sort of a skirt. It can be really long tunic length. I've made only the shirts, the shirt length. It's very wearable. All right, so actual works in progress. Let me see. I put a square on my blanket. I was sick yesterday. Um, Three-fourths of the family had a very strange 24-hour bug, which was not pleasant. The little guy escaped unscathed. Is that redundant? He escaped unscathed? Well, I guess you could be scathed and then escape. This is what it's like in my head. I need to shut up about this stuff. Okay. All right, so I put a square of Miss Babs Yummy 3-ply, which is a sport weight, and this is the Coffee Break colorway. I want to get it a little closer. Got my Sucre Sucre Miniatures, um, what's that thing called? A peep. <laughs> really wonderful colorway. Um, my husband is, has started a hitchhiker out of it, so I snagged a little ball to make um, a square in my blanket. And this is really all I was, my point was about being sick is that this is pretty much what I was capable of yesterday. This is just a very fun blanket. It needs to stay out of its bag, I think. I think if I have it displayed that I'll be more likely to knit on it. I also have the sock head hat, still going, out of Nomadic Yarns Rhinebeck Sweater Weather colorway. Um, here we are. Colors really aren't accurate. It's much more toothsome and delicious colorway than it's showing up on screen. I guess you're not seeing a, a lot of the reds and the golds. There's sort of a golden hue over the whole thing. And then this, this is the ball. I haven't weighed it. I don't know where I am as far as weight goes, but I am about two inches shy of the decreases. So I do four inches of ribbing. This is a sock head hat by whoever the genius is that posted this free pattern. I want to say Susan somebody, Kelly somebody. I really should look these things up. I've This is probably my, th it's, I feel like it's my fourth. Could be wrong. But it's one of those patterns you can make over and over again. So I do have a sock on the needle. It is the, my vanilla sock. It's out of West Yorkshire Signature 4-ply in the Owl colorway. I love this. I love this so much. I'm so glad I got this one. Um, I'm not sure who this sock is for yet. It may, it may be a Father's Day gift. I really love it, though. Isn't that great? So this has BFL content. It's all British, British wool in here. There's some nylon as well. And I'm using this um, Queensland Rustic Tweed. For the accents, the heels, the cuffs, the toes. I love this. I love this wool. Now, the woolly thistle on Etsy got a big. This is what she was um, going to stock that I couldn't tell you about last week. She is stocking this now, as well as their cocktail line of yarns, which I need to get the passion fruit one. Don't buy it because I need it. Oh, buy it. I'll get it eventually. Um. What else is going on? Okay, I have two other projects. One is a new cast on. It's called the Pincha. It's a knitty pattern. It's from the latest knitty. And I think it's Silly Fru that's doing the Don't Hoard the Precious knit along. This qualifies because I've been hoarding this skein for a very long time. The Pincha is a shawl. And I am using another crafty girl in the Gamut colorway been in my stash for three or four years because no yarn, no pattern has been worthy. And I think this one is. This is the Pincha. It's a, a small shawl that 
wraps around like that. P-I-N-C-H-A. It's hard to show off. Um, and this is a pattern that takes your full attention. At least for me it does. Probably for everybody. Let me show you this without all these cords in the way. So there's one feather completed. Look at that. It is, it is short row shaping and it's genius. Look at that. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I am on the second feather, leaf, flower, feather. We'll call it a feather. It's garter stitch and I think it's going to be great. I'm knitting it on US 6s, 4 millimeters, chow goo, interchangeables. So um, this is a replacement cord that they sent me because one of my cords on my interchangeables broke. This is quite different from the original cord and I like it less. Some people might like it more, but it has more wiggliness than the other one, the original cord. I don't like it. I'm used to that other cord. And I wonder if they've changed it in response to a lot of people who didn't like the first cord. I don't know, you can't please everyone, but I like the other cord better. Okay, the last knitting work in progress is my threshold sweater. And this, I hunkered down for many days and did, I don't know, like 12 to 15 rows a day. And there's a significant amount of knitting on fingering weight yarn. So the last time I showed you, I was at that lollipop. I have one more hip increase to do. So that lollipop was about at my, be um, my belly button. So after this repeat and the next increase, gosh, I don't know, I think there are about 300 or more stitches on here. So that's a lot of stitches. Um, this is a threshold by Melanie Berg. And as I said, I just need to finish that one more hip increase and then I'll put it on, I'll, I'll put it on again and see if I can start the ribbing for the bottom. It's got a split hem, which I find very attractive and flattering. That is out of Hazel Knits Artisan Sock, um, a big wheel, two big wheels in the quill colorway. And why don't I show you the first big wheel? Because I was remarking on how squishy it was last time. It's even squishier this time. I'm definitely going to get most of the front done out of this big wheel. Sorry, I do this every time, don't I? Okay, sorry about that. I always hit the mouse with something. All right, that is all of the knitting. Spinning. Let me take a little drink of coffee. Stop it. The bird activity has been insane. There's a robin thinking she may be able to build a nest on my light outside. No. No, she is not allowed to do that. There's a reason. I've had that happen before and it wasn't good. Long story, but it was not good. Um, some of her babies got in my house when they fledged. And uh, I didn't realize they had gotten in my house uh, when the door was open one morning when my kids were little and I came home from work and there was baby robin poop everywhere plus a baby robin. So Money Penny is a lovely little Shetland you who lives at the Ross Farm. I have was able to purchase her fleece last summer. She has been washed and combed and now she's getting spun into singles. Now Shetlands come in a variety of colors and in fact this fleece, this fleece has a lot of colors within it. It has mainly Emskit and Fleckit. She is an Emskit caped Fleckit. So Emskit is this white colorway. And then Fleckit is variations of all of these other ones. Now I sort of see it as, this is Fleckit. It's variations of tan, sometimes with a wee bit of Morit brown. But then I get very, like almost bits that are between the two colors and it's more of an oatmeal. See the difference? And of course this is very pure Emskit. I believe there are about 11 different 
I always say 11, but it's either 11 or like 22. It's a multiple of 11. Lots of colorways, lots of natural colors in the Shetland flock. So this was a single coated Shetland. Some Shetlands are dual coated. This was single coated. Um, so it's mostly just the very soft, fluffy down and none of the outer, the outer wool that is more like a guard hair. Not necessarily a guard hair. If you know what a, an Icelandic fleece is like, I think those are always double coated. And the tog, I believe, is the outer coat and the fell is the downy undercoat. And it keeps the sheep weatherproof in those extreme conditions. But this little sheep lives in Pennsylvania and she's got a single coat, which is cool. I think both are recognized in the Shetland world. Although I could be saying something incredibly controversial and not know. So I plead ignorance if that is the case. I'm waiting for Deb Robeson to publish her book on Shetland. The, the, the sheep, not the place. Um, waiting with bated breath. Okay, so what I have left is the M skit. This is, <laughs> I'm just looking at it like, oh, I wish this spin were finished because I want to have the yarn. I want to apply it. That is a sample, a three ply. Um, this is another two ply sample. And this is all of the white, the M skit. The other thing that I'm sort of working on is my Gotland fleece, which has all been washed. Um, I don't remember the name yet. I need to learn the name of the sheep. Charity, I think was its name, her name. So very easy to wash, not a lot of lanolin, although I left, there is still a bit in there. It was fairly a fairly clean fleece. Um, I combed a little bit. I need to educate myself a little bit more on how to spin, look at that lock, longer wools like this. I know less twist is required. Um, I've spun a little bit on my, one of my Tibetans and I don't know, this just screamed to me lace weight, like a two ply lace weight, which is kind of frightening because I don't like to knit with those kinds of yarns. Um, and then I put some on my trindle I mean, I, granted, now I'm using fiber tools that spin very thin singles. A trindle goes very fast. It spins very thin singles. And this goes fairly fast as well. I need to try on my wheel with different ratios and different amounts of um, tension and see what works. But my wheel has been occupied with the Shetland, so that's on hold. The other thing I spun this week was my Highland Handmaid's Club. This is Polworth Silk Latent. This is the Latent colorway. It's 8515 Polworth Silk. Simply gorgeous. I love wool and silk blends for weaving. This could be amazing on the loom. Um, this is 290 yards of a traditional three ply. So it's spun fairly thin, um, four ounces. Uh, now what did I want to say? So I had it on, th well here's, here's the beauty of having a bobbin winder. Um, I have a shocked bobbin winder. It cost $110. I bought it at the Woolery. I think it's just a brilliant fiber tool to have. So when I started this, I did not know how I wanted to spin it. Three ply, two ply, chain ply, four ply, singles, so many options. So I just spun it, my, my default spinning, onto one bobbin on my ladybug. And then got to know the fiber as I was spinning and decided that I wanted it to be a three ply, not a chain ply, but a, not a chain ply, three ply, but a, a traditional three ply. So I knew it was four ounces. So I wound off onto storage bobbins approximately an ounce and a third. And I did that three times. And I would just pop the, bob, the little storage bobbin off the bobbin winder and weigh it. And I added, you know, whatever the bobbin winder weighed as well. I think it was maybe half an ounce. So, so I was able to do a fairly accurate three ply in terms of getting the right amount of weight on each bobbin. That said, I did have some extra. 
and I turned, so I had extra on all three, um, did I have extra on all three? No, I had extra on two bobbins. So first I did a two-ply. I don't know how much, this is much oranger than the three-ply. This one's got much more purple tint to it. So this is a two-ply. This will go into my blanket. Then I had more left on one final bobbin and I, so I decided to chain ply that. So I could just, and I just did this one type of yarn after the other. This is the chain ply. It hasn't been twisted up. Three ply, two ply, chain ply. So when I put the yarn onto the Nitty Knotty, when I noticed the transition from one type of yarn to the next, I just I just broke it. So yeah, latent. Very beautiful. I love being in the Highland Handmaid's Club. It's super fun. Can't wait to see what comes next. It's always a surprise. All right. I'm doing, I'm sewing a quilt. I have, this will be my third quilt. I've done two jelly roll quilts. They came out fine. Um, this time I'm not going to bind the quilt. I'm going to, um, sew the quilt. How am I going to do that? You know how you sew things right sides to get right sides together and leave a gap and then you turn them right side out. I'm going to do that with this quilt. Um, cause I really stink at sewing bindings. I just do. So. I am completely copying, completely copying this idea from Lynn Zim on Instagram, although I do believe she found this idea on a blog. And in fact, the blog is called, la la la, it's called Let's Quilt Something, and it's the Rainbow Bargello Quilt. Excuse me. <clears throat> no, I need to find this, okay. I thought this was up on my iPad. So this is made out of Kona quilting cotton. It's a, you get you buy two jelly rolls. Here we go. Yeah, let's quilt something. Blogspot.com. This is what the final item looks like. I know, so fun. I think did I mention this before? I don't know if I did, um, but yeah. You get two jelly rolls of this Kona cotton in the rainbow colors. I'm on the very first step. Where you sew them together in strips. So far I've gotten through the yellows. While fighting with my machine and all that good stuff. So I believe that when you have the, all of the strips sewn together, you put them into a tube. You sew them into a tube like this, basically. And then there's some cutting that happens and the manipulation of strips. And it's decept deceptively simple, I believe. I say that now. Um, I'm hoping, if this turns out well, I'm hoping to barter it with my friend. She does not know this yet. And I'm not going to mention it to her. I don't think she watches the podcast. I know she does occasionally, which kind of freaks me out because she puts, she has a big, computer screen in her art studio and she puts my face out there. If it turns out well, I'll see if she wants to barter for a piece of original artwork because I love her artwork and I want more. And she is obsessed with rainbows. So that's where this is going. Um, yeah. All right. So I have one acquisition this week and it was something that was sent to me from Anne Choi, Middlebrook Fiberworks. I love this, where off-center is the norm because her stamp is off-center. And she's off-center, which is a great place to be. And I do believe that is written with a fountain pen. It was so, this, she wrote a little note here and she says, thanks for letting me play with the Eerie Silk. I'm so ordering some. She spun me two of her famous necklaces using a combination of Muga silk that she had, which is that honey color, and the Eerie silk, which is the copper. So she does these amazing necklaces 
Um, she's based in New Jersey now, and she has an amazing fiber studio, and I think she's doing um, like classes and events there, and it's a farmhouse kind of setting. So you can hook them together, and she core spins right onto this very stretchy cord. So I just put two of them together. I wear it like that. Or you can double them up. They're very stretchy. And wear them like this. Um, I wouldn't do this generally, but since they're so stretchy, you could use them as a headband. You don't want to be very careful with the silk because it is delicate. Or you could wear them as a bracelet. So thank you, Anne. I cannot thank you enough. They are amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, this is my third set of her necklaces. And on a lot of them, she does kind of the big um, cocoons. These are very simple and so, so gorgeous. So th those are naturally colored silk. And it just depends, I believe, on the type of silkworm and what they eat. Um, Erie silk. What is the silk, central silk board saying about Erie silk? It's the worm Samia Cynthia Rossini, found in the northeast of India and some parts of China and Japan. The name Erie is derived from the Assamese word era, which means castor, as the silk word feed, silkworm feeds on castor plants, which I believe are toxic to humans. Castor means beaver in French, so I have a hard time like figuring out what. What does it actually, what kind of plant is that? And I think it's toxic. I wonder what castor plant is in colloquial American speak. I'm trying to tell you, but my internet has decided to crawl. Anyway, it is a naturally colored silk based on the type of worm and their diet. And it's gorgeous and it glows, beautiful colors. Okay, almost done here, you guys. Have you seen the Maryland Sheep and Wool video that my husband made? It's it's up. Um, it's a little bit it's a little bit strange. I, I won't lie. The music choice was um, a nod to my children, who it's the theme song to one of their favorite shows called Gravity Falls. Anyway, that's the beginning. Um, but it shows a bit of the the um, sheep to shawl auction and some of those teams and some animals and just sort of a different look at Maryland Sheep and Wolf. I can't put my finger on it, but it's somehow different this year. And I would love to somehow have him smoosh together. This is the third one he's done. Have him smoosh all three of those videos together. I think the first one was two or three years ago. And I, I wonder if that would give an excellent representation of the festival because there are different things he captures every year. So. So yeah, Maryland Sheep and Wool, it's, it's in the books for one more year. Sadly, something, I believe something, I had a, a thing happen, and I, I'm pretty sure it happened at Maryland Sheep and Wool. I pay cash at Maryland Sheep and Wool, but I do carry a credit card for emergencies. It's not my bank card, thankfully. I did not have that with me. But this is apparently a thing now where people have a, a credit card reader that they can just stand next to you and capture the number on your card. I don't know how it works, and I don't know why people haven't invented a wallet that can block this kind of thing from happening. Maybe they have, and I don't know about it. Do you know? If you do know, please tell me, because I need to get one, apparently, because my credit card number was stolen. So I have been dealing with that. Uh, the credit card company said it most likely happened at the festival, even though I didn't use my card. It's very easy in big crowds for this to happen. So, you know, I have a lot of cash and I just pay with that the entire weekend. Okay, now I've just said I have a lot of cash. Okay, that was stupid. I have a, it's, it's a wad, but it's all ones. Okay, all right. Anyway, I don't have a credit card at the moment because I'm waiting for replacements. So, that is a sad thing. So, beware. Caveat emptor. Although that doesn't really apply in this situation. Um, you know. That's all I have to say. On a happier note, I am going to Fiberspace on Friday, and I am taking a three-hour class with Susan B. Anderson. 
um, a lucky, lucky girl. Again, I should not complain about anything. You know, when I could take a class with Susan B, it's a good day. Um, this is her shawl design workshop. So I am tossing around ideas for witch yarn and needles I will take with me. So I have some ideas, but I have not finalized my decision. All right, you guys. Oh, I wanted to show you this. This is the jelly roll, the Kona. Kona roll up, all those gorgeous colors. I took out the brown because I didn't know where the heck to put it. Um, because they have it with a red here, and I just didn't, I just didn't want the brown with the red. Y'all having a good week? I hope so. I am off to help second graders paint t-shirts. You know, I should probably change my shirt. Yeah, there's going to be paint everywhere. I will change my shirt before I go out. And until next time, you all take care. Bye-bye.